Oh, hey, just a second. I need to shut my cell phone down, take my hat off, and spit my gum out, make sure I get it in the trash can. I apologize. Well, now that I've taken care of that, I'm ready to go for the day. Good afternoon, Fossil Ridge. I want you to pay close attention to what we're going to talk about for the next 15 or 20 minutes as it relates to school-wide behavior expectations. Uh, so whatever you're doing right now, I want you to sit up. I want you to put your book away, put your backpacks down, uh, put your cell phones away. They shouldn't be out and pay close attention to what we're going to talk about for the next little while because it is very important for our school, our students, our faculty, and our staff that we are all aware of the expectations we have of our students and that students are aware of not only the expectations but the possible consequences that could follow. So what we're going to do today is quickly go over five different areas for student behavioral expectation. And as we go through each one, uh, I'll talk to you about the specific expectations, and then we'll also talk about possible, com possible consequences that may come as a result. Uh, the faculty here at Fossil Ridge has worked very hard to put these expectations together. Uh, we are committed to ensuring the, the safety of our students. We are committed to ensuring that the learning environment is this school in the school is at its optimal level. And that is why these, these items are so important to us. So first, let's talk about the halls. We're going to break down each category into a before school, during school, and after school expectation. So in our halls before school, and we've, began to, we've begun to do a great job with this in the last couple of weeks, we are to remain in the commons area. The only students that are allowed to leave the commons area before school are those students who either A, have a library pass, the sticker that you have received to put on your, your ID card, and or a pass or some kind of a note from a teacher uh, who has requested that you, you arrive early in the morning to do some work or make up an exam, whatever it may be. So early in the morning, we need to make sure that we are in the commons unless we have a pass from a teacher or a library pass. In addition, uh, we have over the last couple of months had an increasing number of issues with cell phone usage during school, uh, pictures being taken and posted on social media of students uh, in a very inappropriate manner. And so as a result, our cell phone policy is going to change a little bit. We, we initially during the year, we allowed students to have, your, have cell phones in the, in the commons area before school and during lunch. Uh, unfortunately, that, that policy and, and that freedom has gotten away from us. And so we're going to need to pull that back. And students, you need to, you need to, be, you need to understand, and this needs to be very clear, our cell phone policy will completely change. No longer will students be able to have their cell phones out in any way, shape, or form unless a teacher asks you to get them out during class. So when you get to school in the morning, your cell, if you have a cell phone with you, it needs to be turned off and put in your backpack for the rest of the day. During school in the hallway, the, the there are a couple things that are most important to us as a faculty. Number one, students are expected to walk, whether going to class, going to the commons, going to the office, going to reach time, going home, going to lunch, whatever it may be, students must at all times walk. 
walk, walk, walk. For the most part, we do a pretty good job of this at a, as a school, but we can do better. And as we're walking through the halls, we need to stay to the right. As we're walking down the halls, you stay to the right. Whether you're walking one direction or another, it does not matter the direction you are walking. You simply walk to the right side of the hallway. When you are going up and down the stairs, the stairs have been marked. They are clearly marked up and down. When you are going up the stairs to the second floor of the building, you need to go up the stairs where it is labeled up. When going down, you need to go down the down stairs. You need to make sure that you are keeping your hands to yourself. We're not going to mess around with backpacks. We're not going to pull each other's backpacks off. We're not going to try to take things from each other. We're not going to push. We're not going to shove. We're not going to kick. We're not going to hit. As we're moving to and from class, we're going to keep our hands completely to ourselves. As we're walking through the halls, we need to do so respectfully. We need to respect those around us, whether it be students, faculty, or staff. We need to make sure that no one is using the elevator unless you have a note from the main office. The elevator is off limits. Next, after school. And again, this is something we've been doing a very good job of recently as well. Once the final bell rings at two o'clock, we in immediately need to go to our bus, our carpool, or begin the process of walking home. We, we have to get out of the building. We, we can't allow students to stay in small groups in the commons area or go outside and get in small groups on the blacktop. When the bell rings at 2 p.m., it's time for us to begin the process of exiting the building as quickly and as safely as possible, walking. What happens if any of these hall rules are broken? Well, one of the consistencies that you're going to see as we talk is the fact that the consequences are the exact same uh, for each expectation. The first piece will be a verbal warning from a teacher, a staff member, a member of the administration, Officer Lewis, uh, one of our counselors, any, any verbal warning from an adult in the building. The second offense, uh, your parents will get an email or a phone call home to notify them that this is indeed the second time that this issue has come up and that this expectation has not been met. If it has happens a third time, uh, that student will be placed in a five-day lunch detention. Student's name will be referred to Mr. Howell or Mrs. Brackett, and from there the process of lunch detention will begin. As far as cell phones are concerned, uh, they need to be off at all times, uh, completely turned down and shut off in the backpacks, again, unless uh, one of your teachers has asked you to get it out to use it. The process for cell phones, first offense, again, will be a, ver a verbal warning. Second offense, your phone will be taken to the main office and it will be picked up by you after school, after you have had a conversation with Mr. Brackett, or excuse me, Mrs. Brackett or Mr. Howell. And then the third offense, uh, the teacher will simply send the, the cell phone to the office again. However, this time, uh, your parent will be contacted and the parent will be forced to come to school to pick it up. Classroom behavior, classroom expectations. Again, similar thing in the morning that we talked about with the halls. We need to remain in the commons unless we have a pass from a teacher or the library. During school, one of the biggest issues we are seeing in regards to classroom time is the fact we're not getting there on time. It is an expectation of every single Fossil Ridge student to be to class on time. Not 30 seconds after the bell rings, not a minute after the bell rings, and certainly not five minutes after the bell rings, 
but our students need to be in class on time, in their seats, ready to get to work. We have a limited number of minutes in a, in a class period, and your teachers have worked extraordinarily hard to prepare a lesson that uses every single last minute of that time. And when students are late, it disrupts the, the flow of the class, and it takes that time and it begins to whittle it down even smaller. Not only that, but it is disrespectful to your classroom teacher and to the other students in that class to be late. So expectation number one is to be on time. Again, cell phones in the classroom completely powered off unless a teacher is allowing you to use them. We need to respect one another in the classroom. Respect your peers. Respect yourself. Respect your teacher and any other adult in the room. And this includes students. This includes substitute teachers. We need to respect the property of others in the classroom, whether it's a computer or a textbook or the desk or art supplies, other students' personal belongings. We need to respect those things. We need to respect and obey and follow classroom expectations that each one of your teachers has established for the class. In addition to being on time, you need to come to class prepared each day to do your work. Your planner needs to be with you every day. You should have access to that planner during class time. If your teacher needs you to get to it to do some things for class, or if your teacher needs you to open up uh, to be stamped for reach time, the planners need to be out. And again, like I did with my gum earlier, no gum. Leave the gum at home. We, we thought we had made it clear earlier in the year. Perhaps we did not, and that is my fault. And so understand there is to be no gum in the building. No gum in the commons, no gum in the gyms or the gym, no gum in classrooms. Uh, no gum, period, at school. It is just making a mess. And similar to the cell phones, you know, it's, it, during the during the day it's something that has just exploded and as a result we need to make it very clear that that we are not chewing gum at Fossil Ridge Intermediate we are going to respect this building we are going to respect this classroom we are going to respect our custodial staff and our teachers who are the ones that have to clean up these messes by leaving our gum at home not in our backpacks we're going to we're going to just leave that gum at home after school, again, as we talked about, when the bell rings at 2 o'clock, we're going to exit the classroom as quickly and safely as possible. We're going to immediately go out to the bus, to our carpool, or begin the process of walking home. So what happens when these expectations aren't met? You've seen these before, students. You'll get, for the first offense in the classroom, a verbal warning from your teacher. Jonathan Howell. You've got gum in your mouth. You need to spit that out and you need to make sure that you don't have it at school again. That is your warning. If it happens again, your parents will be contacted by email or phone. If it happens a third time, uh, you will be referred to lunch detention. Again, five days lunch detention. And we'll talk more tomorrow about lunch detention. Cell phones that are, are out during class without teacher permission will follow the same process, a verbal warning, a uh, phone taken from the student uh, to be picked up in the office at the end of the day, the third time the phone taken to the office to be picked up by a parent at the end of the day. A couple of other things. We're not joking about tardiness. We are extraordinarily serious students about your being on time to class.